Slot Gang. Well, today we're going to talk about walls and barriers and guardrails. Because when you have a car and it goes off the track, you don't want to hit anything hard like the floor or the wall or anything else that might cause it damage or scratch it up. So what we use are various things. We use guardrails like this, which are pretty common. I'm going to show you a technique I made for making this particular type of guardrail. We use barrier walls, which are supposed to, you know, simulate a concrete wall. I'll show you what I use for this. And uh, also, similar walls we make are barrier walls with catch fences, um, like this here. This particular one I won't get into too much today because it's a, it's a little more complicated, but I will get into something similar. It's a uh, actually a concrete retaining wall. It's a little bit higher, and that's something I use for uh, other parts of the track where I have uh, elevation or level changes and things like that. So, so that's what we're going to get into today. In the case of guardrails, you know, borders like that. Here's here's an example of what I've used before. This is a typical, this is a Ninco. Um, I like this stuff. It's pretty flexible, easy uh, to, it's easy to find still, relatively easy. You know, I, but I always like this. But the thing is, I wanted something a little more substantial than these two, uh, two rails. So what I've done is to create a little more substantial with an extra rail at the bottom. And how I do this is that I take um, basically this Ninco rail. I will trim off the clips on the bottom because I don't use these. What I do is I attach these directly to the side uh, of the track with uh, hot glue, whatever um, method I use there. And then I take an extra rail and attach it to the bottom. Uh, these extra rails are actually from an old, these are some Artin um, barriers that I had from before. Um, it's a little bit different plastic. It's a little stiffer than the Ninco plastic, but it'll work just fine. What I do is I remove one of these rails and then I um, cut it to fit length and then I actually hot glue it onto that which gives us a pretty um as you see a pretty pretty substantial rail there and it, i think it'll hold up okay uh, so far it seems to be pretty good you know it it bends flexes pretty good but although it keeps a little more uh, shape because of that um, bottom rail and it works pretty pretty well this is all going to get painted with another coat of silver paint because uh, as you can see this is a little more shiny at the bottom but this is what I'm going to use so what I want to show you is uh, kind of how I create this uh, from this okay so here's our Ninco barrier so what I want to do here is I'm basically clipping off these tabs at the bottom because as I said I, I don't use them and what you want to do is you want to try to get these, I guess I previously cut these a little bit with a uh, razor knife. But again, I want to make sure that this is as flat as I can get it, so as flush as I can get there with the bottom. So I will take a razor just kind of very carefully, you know, cut this off just so it's flush with the bottom. And once I've gotten that off and is, uh, flush as it needs to be, then I will go take the um, Artin, which as you can see, that was originally that bright yellow they like for everything. And then I'll just clip this off. So I'll take that, and I'll make sure the top is, is pretty flush, but the bottom here I don't want that sticking up so basically I have to trim that a little bit just to make sure it's nice 
Plus, so you don't see it. See the, the remnants of those little tabs sticking up there, so I don't want that. So get that out there as much as much as you can. And this last one. That's about a bit. So see that gives us a pretty pretty nice flush section there. So we're good there. So our next move then will be to add this to the bottom. Now usually what I'll do is we want this to be even at this end and then we'll trim it at the top end but we'll trim it after we've glued it. So I've got here's my handy dandy Rio, Rio V hot glue gun. These are actually pretty convenient if you're out working around the track if you got to move you know within a fairly large space. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than a regular gun. Um, so, you know, so it's, it may seem a little clunky, but actually it's not too bad. Um, and again, the mobility makes it uh, very useful. But nice, nice bit of glue on each one of those. You know, I don't worry too much about the little hairs. I hate those things. They are a pain in the ass, aren't they? And then we'll take this and again, just make sure it matches up with where it's supposed to go. And like with all hot glues, it will set up pretty quick. Just hold that for a couple minutes. Again, the minute that glue gets cool enough to touch, it's basically set. You can pull those nasty little hairs off it. So you can see what that looks like from the back, which isn't, you know, doesn't matter much to me. But again, we're all set there. Now to trim this, we'll come in and make two cuts. Actually, it's so much easier to do it this way, coming in an angle. And then get in a little bit closer. See, trying to match that up as close as I can. Cut it. Just twist the end off. And there we go. So we've got our basic piece here. Take another one of these. You can clip it in the back just like you would a regular nib quarter. And there we are. We've got our uh, a little more substantial uh, border set here, which I really kind of like. Um, it just looks a, a little more modern. And uh, I like this look. So again, this is another alternative. Another thing I use around the track, and this is probably the best if you want to bear your wall, is this material. This is this quarter inch green craft hobby foam. Um, this stuff, I cut it into strips about maybe an inch and a half high. And I'll, the nice thing is I can just you know put a bead of glue in the bottom and you can wrap this right around the glue, right to the side of the track. It's nice and soft. I uh, like the plastic in this. This is never going to damage your car, uh, you know, if you run a car into it. You know, I'm always hesitant to use other materials like maybe a maybe harder plastic or, you know, metal or anything like that because it's going to, you know, you hit that or rub it, it's going to scratch your car all up. This stuff will not do that. Um, I also have a technique, which I'll show you at some point later, where I actually make a catch fence out of this with uh, some, uh, like, coffee stir sticks, some uh, screen. Um, and then a, a top uh, border here to hold everything together. Uh, I'll show you how to do that later. But again, this is a, this is a wonderful material for like a border wall. Now, if it's a straight border wall, what I usually use is the same width of uh, foam core, just like white foam core. If it's going to be rigid and if it's going to be straight, but anywhere in the track where it's curved, this stuff is just absolutely wonderful. So here's a couple shots. Uh, you can see some examples of these. Uh, materials first you see the guardrail where it's been set in place in the scenery again this uh, is a section of the alpine uh, part of the track it works uh, really well secondly you'll see a section of the barrier wall and it's a, an adjacent part of the track nice thing about the barrier wall which you'll typically see uh, in most racetracks is you get advertising applied to that and again that's a pretty simple process uh, i print my own on actually vinyl self-adhesive sticker paper. I find the vinyl uh, bends a little bit nicer um, and then I just apply it. One thing I do, it's a little different. I used to apply these flat. I would lay the, uh, the wall down flat and apply them and I found that once I bent the wall and put it in place it would be misshapen and uh, not, uh, not look the best. So what I do now, and even though it's a little more difficult, is I place the stickers on a curved wall uh, after I've got it installed. That way they end up uh, looking a lot better. So what I've done here basically is just to take these two pieces of soft foam, you'll see, 
Again, this stuff is the edible foam that I'll use. These are going to be concrete walls that actually wrap around uh, some curves of the track where I need to have uh, that kind of effect. So just put a light coat of paint on these to begin and then uh, you know, I'm letting it dry and then I'll do some other effects on here and then they get it ready to put in place. Okay, so in this section, what I'm going to do is show you how I kind of detail. This is going to be a concrete retaining wall. Again, this is this, you know, craft foam, hobby foam that I got at, I think, my local Michaels. So what I've done is I put a wash of uh, just light gray, like for concrete on this, just flat. You really can't see here in the picture. There's, there is actually a little more texture and, and variation to the color here than what shows. Uh, I put in, you know, a horizontal um, wash, which you can kind of see because, you know, concrete does get poured in layers. And then I also went over it with a little sponge. You, you can't really see it. It doesn't show up here, but when it's in place <clears throat> and we get light from another um, perspective, I think uh, you'll be able to see a little bit better. Actually, I, yeah, that might be more light than I need. So, but what I'm going to do here then is, you know, this, this is a retaining wall. It's probably about eight feet high at least. And what I want to do is uh, put in, it's, you know, there's sections of the wall, the way it was laid in, you know, maybe these were uh, precast concrete or whatever. So what I want to do first, <clears throat> so to divide this into, you know, areas, sections, I want to kind of get it here. So it's roughly 12 inches. So it, you know, six inches, we'll put one probably about every two inches, roughly. Here, I'll just mark them off. <clears throat> do this top and bottom. So once we mark it like that, we use that a little bit as a as a guide for what we want to do. Now, this um, this foam will actually take a texture. You can you can actually um, kind of emboss it a little bit if you have the right tool. What I'm using here, this particular tool, is uh, back in the day <clears throat> when I was in advertising doing graphics and layout. There was a product called Letraset. Um, it was actually rub in rub on lettering. You would apply the sheet on a thing, and then this was a burnisher. You would burnish the lettering on, lift it off, and, and you have the letter left on this. It's a really though, it, it's it's a handy tool. It's got a unique. Uh, I can see it. Yeah, you can see it there. Shape to it. Uh, you can use it for a lot of different things, but it'll it'll you know make a, a impression in a in a uh, in something like a phone without actually cutting it. So what I've done here is I'll take this, and we'll do this to a section. You can kind of see what we're doing here. So. I'll just take this and again make that make that impression into the foam there. Make another one again. They were trying to make this look kind of like a, a precast panel. Another one there. You'll just see this a little better when I hold it up to the light, but you'll see that it actually does uh, leave a pretty good um, you know, texture on this. It bobs it pretty pretty well. Too well there. That's okay. We're gonna actually put something in there to uh, darken it a little. So maybe you can see better here with the light, but you can see we've actually put some texture on there to make this look like a concrete, like a clear. Now I can take that. And I could put like a maybe I'd actually put a marker in here. But you know we'll take that and uh, let me get something I can actually put a marker in there just to make it stand out a little bit more. So there, you can see that a little bit better, but we actually do have some texture there. Now, another thing with these precast panels, usually there's, these are often you know, bolted into a surface and you'll see these round circles there. So that's another thing I'm gonna do here. I can just do this by hand, I'll put this in here. Don't have to be real precise, but you wanna try to get these as regular as you can. Just take a pen and just bury it in there. Because again, you'll often see this in a precast panel. Kind of see a little bit how that shows up. We'll put something there to darken that up. And we'll do this at the bottom as well. Actually, I should probably do this a little bit higher because part of this will get onto the track. This will actually get the bottom of this will be glued onto the track. All right. <clears throat> Take this. I'm actually going to just rub the, the pencil in there a little bit just to get a little bit more bring out the shadow. I could probably hit this with like you know, a paint wash better. We want to do that right now. <clears throat> You do things this way, you don't really have to worry too much about the technique. Just go light. This being a pencil, if you mess up, obviously, you can actually kind of erase it a little bit. It's just light the technique. So if we take a look at that, kind of see what we have there now. We have a 
these panels. And we have like the, the bolt holes that actually there were these precast panels were attached to make the retaining wall. And then what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and repeat this on this piece. And then I have another section of retaining wall here that I'll do it. But to, rather than make you watch that whole process, I'll just go ahead and do it. And then we'll uh, we'll show you how we get this installed. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to test fit our wall in place here. So you can see where this retaining wall is going to go, just to make sure it fits. And, and it does. It pretty much goes exactly where we're planning on having it go. Probably move it over and about there. So basically, and it's it's just going to get um, glued to the side of the track where these borders are over here. So to start that process, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll get our uh, heat gun ready and we'll go ahead and get this installed. Okay, so of course I forgot to turn the camera on when I went to install this, but uh, basically all we did was we just put some hot glue a bead around the bottom edge of the thing and attached it here. So basically uh, this is our retaining wall on this side and I will show you attaching another wall on the other side of the track. But we have this here, and then I may put something also in here. Uh, uh, it's another soft kind of uh, barrier, you know, because obviously in a real track, you wouldn't want to go right into a concrete retraining wall. So I may put something else in here a little bit thinner uh, to simulate that kind of a protective uh, barrier there. But uh, let's go ahead and I'll uh, show you the other side and we can show you installing that one. And you'll have to forgive me. I know my lighting is not the best here, but this is where we want this to go. This section will go in here. The difference is this is going to get glued on the bottom. We're going to try to follow this curve as, as best we can uh, for this portion of our table. Well, uh, let me get this going here. So as opposed to the one on the other side, this one is actually glued on the bottom attached to the top of the uh, border. Except for down here, I had to do a little extension to get some connection there where it dropped off. I do have a little gap here. Uh, I will fill that with something. Um, so you don't see that. I'll probably put some uh, uh, gaffer tape underneath there and put a little bit of mud and then again, just paint it and cover that hole there. So. Uh, so you don't see it, but that'll cover us up. Uh, the walled city will come up, they, basically like castle wall will come up in this area and cover that. Um, you know, this is a path of wood on here, some steps, and then we'll have some scenery back in this section over here. But uh, that's the uh, installation of our retaining wall. So you can see here a few views of the uh, retaining wall in place. You can see I installed the uh, extra barrier I wanted on both these walls. Uh, it is just a weather stripping. Uh, it's nice, has like a two uh, sections to it, and it's self-adhesive. So I painted it a red and applied it on the inside of the wall. So you can see it on the first wall I installed, and then the other view you can see it on the uh, second wall. So this also adds a little more protection, although the walls are foam anyway, but it just looks a little more realistic because again, on a racetrack, you wouldn't have a uh, concrete wall with nothing between it and a possible uh, car wreck. If you enjoyed this content, you want to see more, you want to read more, uh, be sure to visit us at slotjournal.com. On uh, Facebook, you can also see us at slot.journal and on Instagram at Slot Journal. Uh, be sure to uh, leave comments, any thoughts you have in the uh, YouTube uh, comments page. We'd like to hear from you. Any suggestions are also uh, welcome as well. Hey, it's time for mailbag. 
That's where we answer questions that people think we might actually have the answer for. Dear Mark at Slot Journal, I am Blake from Omaha. I've been thinking about buying some slot cars on eBay lately, but everything I'm seeing there seems so expensive. Some of the prices are just crazy. Is there any way I can find a good deal? Blake, that's a great question. It's one a lot of people ask. A big part of it depends on what you're shopping for. If you're looking for a new car, there are probably better places to go than eBay. Because what you'll see there are, uh, you know, dealers or other speculators. People buy new cars and they resell them sometimes at a, at a higher price than what you might expect. Plus they tack on maybe a higher than normal shipping charge. For a newer car, you're better off just to go to one of our online dealers. There's lots of them out there, some great reputable shops. Maybe a local store, too, if you have a brick and mortar near you. Uh, but again, shop around. Uh, there's lots of great uh, online stores come to mind. Uh, LEB, Electric Dreams, Slot Car Corner, uh, one, two, 132 Slot Cars US, um, Great Traditions. There's a lot of them out there. And, uh, they offer some uh, really good pricing. Plus, you get good service. You know, they usually ship cars out pretty fast. They allow you to do pre-orders. And uh, the one thing I would suggest, though, is when you are shopping online at for a new dealer, look at the price plus the shipping. You have to really combine both those if you want to get a sense of what kind of deal you're getting. Because some of the uh, online retailers, you know, they'll offer you free shipping for like $100. I think one even does $65. Uh, that could be one car, maybe two, and that's a lot of savings. For example, in another case, you might find a dealer that, you know, looks like they offer cheaper pricing, but they charge for shipping regardless of, you know, what you buy from them. And sometimes the more you buy, you think you get a discount. No, the shipping is even more. So you got to look at both those uh, things to see, uh, you know, what kind of deal you're getting. The other thing now for a used car or a new old stock, sometimes eBay can still be a good place to go. What you find there is... Uh, Sometimes used cars, you can get good prices, especially if it's a gently used car. Uh, you know, you want to save some money. You can find some good deals there. Look carefully at the pictures. You know, look underneath the car. You can get some sense of how much it's been driven. Read the description. You know, you know the seller says, well, it's, it's been raced or maybe it's hardly been run. Uh, you know, look at all the parts. You know, does it have both the mirrors? Does it have the uh, spoiler? On it. Those are things you want to check out, but you can get some decent deals. But you have to shop around because, again, this, the price spread can be really wide. You can find a decent used cars for a really high price or a really low price. Same with new old stock. Uh, sometimes dealers or people will buy a car, never use it, it'll sit on the shelf, they want to get rid of it. You find a brand new car, uh, unless it's a, you know, a collector's model or something that has a specifically high value. Sometimes you can get a decent deal there, but again, you got to shop around, make sure that you don't overpay uh, for whatever it is you're buying. But, you know, eBay can still be a good source, but again, I'd suggest a dealer if you're looking, especially for a new car. Dear Mark from Slot Journal, I'm Tracy from Toledo. Since my husband has discovered a new love for slot cars, it's been, well, great. He's finally found a pastime that keeps him out of my hair and something to spend money on other than beer and cigarettes. How can I encourage him to keep it up and stay on track, so to speak? Well, Tracy, <laughs> looks like you both hit the lottery. You know, your husband finds a healthy interest. Uh, that's always a good thing for your anybody's household. Uh, you know, keeps him out of trouble, keeps him out of your hair, so he's not bothering you about anything. And, uh, you know, it's good to know late at night when he's on the computer, he's looking at Slot cars, not other stuff. But, um, yeah, there's lots of ways you can encourage his hobby. You know, package shows up on the front porch, just bring it in and put it on the dining room table. You won't say anything. Um, you know, encourage him. Ask him if he's uh, found any nice cars lately that uh, he's interested in. And don't say anything if he wants to, you know, indulge himself a little bit. Maybe even ask him if he'll buy you one, you know, racing with him. Once in a while is not a bad idea. It keeps things running well. And, you know, there's, there's plenty of good ways to encourage him in the hobby. But it sounds like uh, you guys are in good shape right now. So, good to it.
Well, I'm going to wrap up this episode with a, maybe a couple things I've seen on the internet, but I just hope that this episode with the, uh, you know, guardrails, barriers, retaining walls, I, I hope I've given you something to help you build that big, beautiful wall uh, for your track that's going to keep those cars where they belong. As far as what I've seen on the internet, I just want to point out that there's a lot of stuff going on right now. Uh, we've got so many creators out there working hard to bring you good content. There's people out there racing cars. There's people out there testing cars. Uh, there's giving you tune-up uh, tricks and tips how to do that. Uh, obviously, lots of uh, tips on scenery and everything going on out there. It seems almost like all the creators are out there trying to throw everything up against the wall in an effort to see what sticks. And uh, that's the only really good way to uh, find out what our audiences want, you know, what provides value, what keeps them interested, and above all, to bring new people into the hobby. So that's a good thing. So with that, I'm going to, you know, cut this episode. I don't want to go any longer because I've got plenty of other stuff uh, in the can to uh, go over in the coming weeks, and uh, we'll get to that. So until then, you know, keep a firm handle on the trigger, and let's step on it.